So welcome to this OpenStack on a silver platter session. So my name is Frédéric Lepier. I'm VP Software Engineering at uh, Innovance. And, uh, hey, thanks for coming. I'm uh, Emilia Macchi, Software Engineer at Innovance. <coughs> so here is the agenda for the session. Uh, we'll start by uh, discussing the uh, reference architecture we are using to deploy our OpenStack. Uh, and we will show you how we deploy OpenStack, uh, which uh, choices we made to, to have scalable uh, deployments. And uh, we'll go through uh, the bare metal part, the hardware detection and validation, and then the step-by-step -step configuration using Puppet, and a sanity test to validate that everything is OK after a deployment. And finally, the, the most important part, uh, how to upgrade your platform. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the reference architecture. Um, so you can see in the picture that it's uh, the famous architecture where you, where you usually split out the services. Uh, but let's have a look at uh, which component we use to deploy. Uh, so if you look in the top, we used to deploy some load balancers with uh, HAProxy and Keep Alive D. And then we have some OpenStack controllers with um, OpenStack API schedulers. We also run MySQL with Galera cluster, uh, RabbitMQ, and MongoDB. Um, for the compute, we, we use a KVM hypervisor. For the network, we use to deploy the MLQ plugin with OpenVSwitch. And for storage backend, for Glen, Cinder, and Nova, we use to deploy Ceph cluster. So let's start a little bit by the story of a deployment. Yeah. So let's start with uh, how, oops. <laughs> yes, we, how we do uh, bare metal deployments. So we, we have taken an unusual approach to use an uh, image to deploy uh, bare metal uh, systems. So the idea is to have a scalable way of uh, deploying uh, uh, a lot of systems at once not repeating the same uh, um, installation of packages, uh, uh, configuration of users. To, so we prepare everything in advance to, and we uh, download everything on each system uh, on the same uh, operation. So to do this, we have to prepare in advance uh, our images. And we, we have built a system that is uh, this Linux distribution agnostic. Uh, that is running on top of uh, Red Hat uh, Enterprise, CentOS, Debian, and Ubuntu. And the idea is to, to build these images once and to be able to reproduce uh, the installation at will. That's very important. This way we can uh, install a system uh, one day, and if a customer or someone has a trouble uh, one year later, we're still able to reinstall the system exactly the same way and to, to debug the, the issue uh, without uh, any trouble for installation. So the philosophy of these images is to build uh, uh, the, the image with all the needed uh, bits, but with uh, nothing configured. That means uh, no service is activated. So when you boot the system, nothing will start. And then uh, we let a configuration management system like Puppet do uh, the configuration of the services, start the right one, configure uh, the, the files that are needed for the service, and activating uh, what is uh, needed for the services. So how we do it for OpenStack itself? We, we have uh, chosen to do only uh, two types of images, one for the installation server and one for OpenStack itself all the services. At the beginning, we were um, designing uh, a lot of different images, but the combinatory was very uh, difficult to cope with because um, sometimes we wanted one service on one uh, system, sometimes another services on another one. For example, you, you want to have uh, the storage and the compute on the same one sometimes. Sometimes you want separated for performances reasons. So we decided at the end that it was too difficult to manage this combinatory, and we put everything on the same image uh, for OpenStack. So all the services are in installed using packages, and then uh, we uh, deactivate all the services at boot. 
and we let Puppet do the job uh, at boot time, at configuration time. And for the installation server, what is it exactly? It's, it's just uh, managing uh, the Puppet Master, mm, the bare metal provisioner, that is just uh, PXC, HTTP, um, and IPXC if, if needed. And for the upgrade server, we rely on uh, AirSync, but we will explain this later. And we also use uh, Jenkins uh, as our way to uh, gather logs and to show the status of the installation. We will come back to this later. <coughs> I will explain you just uh, how it works in terms of um, uh, bare metal deployments in a little bit more details. So when we boot uh, a system, uh, it, it needs to be configured uh, in factory to boot on PXC. So it first boot and request uh, a PXC uh, image. So we, we send the uh, usual kernel image with our special uh, RAM disk containing the installer. So the installer is loaded in, on the system. It requests it request, uh, at this step, uh, it detects the hardware, send back the list of hardware that has been detected to the installation server. Then the installation server has a set of rules um, saying if it uh, has such amount of memory, it, it is a, a compute node. So we will do a configuration this way or for this compute node. And if it's a lot of disk, we will do a, a configuration for a storage node, for example. So we have this uh, kind of rules that we will be able to send a different configuration according to the hardware, in fact. So it send the, um, the installation server is then sending back the configuration script. And the configuration script is only um, here to configure the networking, um, configure the RAID, uh, partition the disks, and then uh, download the image, do put the image on the disk directly on the newly created uh, partition system. Then it, uh, um, it set the uh, bootloader, reboot the system, and then the system uh, at the first boot start uh, using cloud init, and it provision the SSH key to be able to be accessed by the uh, installation server later. And uh, it, it takes uh, something like, uh, I don't know, six or seven minutes to, to do the whole process. It's very fast, and it, it's completely uh, distributed, so we can load a lot of systems uh, from the bare metal to having a complete uh, system ready to be configured by Puppet. And uh, what we, we have also this, this tool called uh, Hardware uh, Health Check that is uh, used to validate that the um, hardware is ready to, be, to accept uh, an OpenStack configuration. Because when you have a, a large set of uh, system you want to deploy, uh, usually you have some failure on disk, you have some failure, you can have some misconfiguration or some cabling problems. So we, uh, I'll talk about this uh, after uh, the e-deploy thing, but it's uh, using the same architecture. That's why I'm explaining just after. So instead of loading the installer RAM disk, we load a benchmarking load, uh, RAM disk that is used to, to do a lot of uh, benchmarks uh, for the networking, for the disk, and for, um, for the memory and CPU. We are using a standard uh, benchmark uh, tools like uh, FIO, Sysbench, and uh, NetPerf to gather statistics to verify that the hardware is uh, correct and is uh, performing as, except, uh, as expected. <coughs> and it's, it's very useful to detect that we have a, a non-functioning uh, hardware uh, in, the, um, in the group of systems. Um, but usually it's run before the installation. I explain it after, but because it's exactly the same infrastructure as the installation. So once you have your server boot and uh, the hardware is configured, you may want to configure uh, OpenStack services, and uh, we are using Puppet for this. So when we started to deploy OpenStack, we had this trouble with Puppet where we could not have a very clean orchestration, where we wanted to first deploy, uh, let's say, uh, the database, then we, we want Keystone, and then we want to run the OpenStack compute services. 
So we started by working on the step-by-step -step deployment. So for to, to doing this, we are using the up, upstream puppet module that you can download in Stackforge. Um, we are also uh, we, we also built uh, an OpenStack module, which is uh, uh, available on the Innovance GitHub, which is a high-level puppet module to configure uh, OpenStack in a flexible way, and uh, all the services are highly available also. Uh, this module is very flexible in terms of uh, backend support. That means you don't have to install Ceph you do, if you don't need to. You can install a NetApp driver or ice cozy or whatever. Um, the, the puppet module is entirely unit tested and uh, we are uh, so we are building the puppet configuration during each step. So the next slide is, is about uh, showing you the, the, the workflow of deployment. Um, so to to validate each step of the deployment we, we are using a framework which is server spec. Server spec is an integration framework then you can write some tests like uh, check if the service is running, uh, test if the, the service is listening to the right port, etc. So we are using this uh, server spec thing to validate that Puppet did the job that we expected. So basically, when you want to add a feature in the deployment, you may want to add an integration test in server spec to validate that Puppet actually did what you expected. So the next slide is about the workflow of the step-by-step -step deployment. If you look forward, uh, you can see that uh, uh, each step we have to run Puppet first one time, and then we run a server spec to see uh, which tests are working or not. If we have some failing tests, we just run Puppet uh, one, one again, and until it uh, works, we, we run Puppet with a limit of five. That means after five times, if the server spec thing still doesn't work, we consider that we have a failure somewhere. And uh, we can, uh, with server spec, it's very easy to, to debug what fails. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a case stone, is not, it's not running during the deployment. You won't continue the deployment until the end. You will stop at step three, where case stone is uh, installing by puppets. And uh, you you can dig directly into the to the bug and and fix it. Um, so and each step is building a report. That means that uh, you can uh, you you can do also some uh, statistic of the deployment. You can see uh, how many time you need to deploy each step, and uh, uh, how how much time the the tests are, are are using are consuming. So you can validate. The deployment, if it's too long, maybe something's wrong in the configuration. So that's, I think we will keep this approach. Uh, we didn't, we didn't uh, took this idea uh, uh, at the beginning. It was like a random idea, and now we are thinking about keeping this uh, this model for the for the future because a step by step deployment uh, saves us a lot of time to to debug the deployment when you have some issues. Once you have OpenStack and Ceph deployed in, in your platform, you may want to validate that uh, all the services are, are up and running. So to do that, we just use uh, all the Tempest framework. So uh, in Tempest, you have some functional testing to validate the API and CLI services. It's about uh, 1,600 functional tests. And we also, we also use uh, an interesting part of Tempest, which is Javelin. Javelin is uh, a tool to uh, validate the upgrade. When you create some resources before the upgrade, you may want to validate that the resources uh, survive to the upgrade process. So Javelin is Tempest is able to do that. Uh, we are also validating um, with the hardware validation. We are validating that the tool is working and we, we don't lose performances during the deployment. And uh, we have a, um, a, last, uh, a last feature in the in Sanity process, which is uh, validate that we can install OpenStack in OpenStack directly. So we don't have to boot uh, physical servers. We can just use a uh, it template and boot uh, the platform in OpenStack. So 
to, to perform all the deployment process, we don't have a nice UI or we don't have a custom interface. We just use Jenkins. And we have, a, we have five jobs doing all the, all the process. The first one is obviously e-deploy. Uh, uh, the first one is uh, hardware validation in, uh, within e-deploy. And then we will, uh, if the hardware is validated, we will bootstrap the, the different servers by installing the roles. Uh, after this, we will configure the, the nodes by using Puppet. And uh, we will, uh, we will uh, run the sanity process to validate OpenStack is up and running. And by the end, we will test uh, the upgrade process for, from the last release to the new one and validate uh, uh, that everything is still working. After the upgrade, we used to run Sanity again to validate that we didn't lose any features in OpenStack. So, upgrade so management. With, so, do, mm. <laughs> with doing upgrades in the room, who knows how to do it? Yeah, only a few hands. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> so, that's a difficult topic in OpenStack. So, um, uh, that's also one of the reasons we have chosen to, do, to go the uh, image way of uh, doing deployments, is that we, we are able to, um, to, to do uh, upgrades of, uh, of a system using images. This way we can ensure that if we do an upgrade or if you do an installation, we will have the same system at the end. So that's very important for us because when you use packages, depending on the order on which you install packages, it can uh, end up in diff different uh, results, in fact, on your system. So that's something very important. So we, we are sure that's, uh, reprodu um, that's predictable and uh, reproducible. <coughs> and also the, the other part that is very important is that we are able to upgrade a large set of systems without uh, uh, downloading image um, package, a list of packages, uh, computing the differences by the package manager on all systems. That's a little bit a waste of time because all the systems have the same, for a lot of compute nodes, they will all have the same list of packages. We don't need to compute on all these systems the same list uh, multiple times. So what we do is that we are using uh, AirSync, in fact, to uh, synchronize uh, an image on the server, on the installation server, to the different uh, installation um, uh, target systems, in fact. And we don't do this uh, randomly because it will end up uh, <laughs> with a mess. So we are orchestrating all this uh, using Ansible uh, playbooks. Uh, we'll explain it to you in detail how we do it. And then we configure everything that has been, what is needed after the upgrade, still using Puppet. Ansible is just here to do the orchestration. And of course, we will, after the upgrade, validate everything. And um, <coughs> using the same uh, test that we are using for, uh, for installations. Uh, what we do is that we, uh, we uh, serialize the update because else it, it's still, it will be a, a combinatory uh, explosion of, uh, of different paths to do upgrades. So we, we have only uh, the path from uh, n, n to n plus 1 or n plus 1 to n plus 2 uh, <laughs> upgrade. Only one by one. Uh, we have Ansible scripts to do one by one. That's what is very important to understand because Ansible scripts are designed for each upgrade. We'll explain you why. So we are going to show you uh, two use cases to, uh, to upgrade the platform. The first use case is a minor upgrade where we don't have much uh, OpenStack resources to upgrade. So basically, it usually happens when uh, you have, uh, like for example here, you have a MySQL uh, upgrade, which is uh, kind of basic if you, if you compare to OpenStack upgrades. So uh, the first step is to prepare the upgrade. So you have to uh, look at the um, uh, image, image build uh, difference between the two versions. And uh, eDeploy is able to tell you which packages are upgrading uh, for the next release. So basically, we used to design the Ansible playbooks uh, after reading the, differ the package uh, difference. So in this use case, we have uh, only to uh, to, to restart MySQL, and uh, since we are running a cluster, we don't have to take care of uh, the, um, the, the backup or whatever. You just have to restart the service. So if you look at the execution, 
uh, again, it's kind of basic. Uh, we have Ansible playbook to stop MySQL to upgrade the node by using eDeploy. So like Frederick said, the upgrade process is very fast by using AirSync. It will only sync the, 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 the upgrading uh, pa packages from the, from the master node. And uh, after the upgrade, which takes maybe a few seconds, you will be able to start MySQL. There is no downtime for this kind of use case. Um, after, the, after the Ansible work, we used to run Puppet one time. Uh, we, we used to validate all the steps again to validate that Puppet uh, did the job uh, that we wanted in the, in the new release. And after this, we uh, validate the, the upgrade by just running the Sanity job that I showed you before, by running uh, Tempest and, uh, and Javelin to validate the the, the last upgrade uh, resources. Uh, after this step, we can say that the, the upgrade is validated, and uh, we can we can move on and uh, and make a release. The next use case is more interesting if you consider OpenStack upgrades. Um, so this one is about upgrading from High South to Juno, and you have also a kernel upgrade. So you wonder that uh, we have to restart the nodes. And uh, since, since you are upgrading the kernel and you are upgrading uh, OpenStack, you may want to restart the nodes to be sure that you, you run the last version of the kernel. So this is something that you see uh, by the same way like before. You, you can see the package difference between the two versions. And uh, this is uh, the most difficult part of the, of the, the, the process. It's think about how to uh, upgrade the, the platform without downtime. So you have to uh, write a smart orchestration by using Ansible. If you look at uh, the, the Ansible part for the, for, for the major upgrade use case, um, you will see that we also stop the services. We run the uh, eDeploy upgrade, and the, the nodes are rebooted. And we wait for the reboot. Uh, obviously, uh, all the services are uh, HA and managed by the HA proxy or pacemaker, so we don't have to manage uh, these parts. They are automatically uh, added to the cluster when they reboot. Uh, for the compute nodes, we wonder if we lose the VM connectivity, and the answer is not, because Ansible is able to take care of the live migration be before the upgrade. So if you want to upgrade your compute nodes, you can just evacuate all your instances to another compute nodes and then uh, take care of the upgrade. Uh, in for sometimes during uh, the upgrade process, it depending on the OpenStack version, you may have some downtimes for some services. But usually, if you write it with Ansible and you manage the configuration with Puppet, everything is automated and pretty fast if you compare to manually process. So after the Ansible work, again, we run Puppet and we validate all the new steps, all the new functional tests. And uh, um, after, we also run Sanity to validate uh, new features in OpenStack. Because we are, we are running a new version, we will have new functional tests in Tempest. So we are able to say if, first, the resources I created before the upgrade are still there. And then I would like to know if the new features in OpenStack are working. So uh, this is uh, integrating in the Tempest process. So you wonder uh, how you can reproduce by yourself. Everything is open. And you can find uh, all the code in the OpenStack project. So the Puppet modules are located in StackForge. Um, we have some uh, custom repository in the Innovance uh, GitHub, uh, like eDeploy is the biggest one. This is uh, uh, the project that you may want to look for the bootstrap. We also share the eDeploy role scripts that build uh, the image. And uh, we have uh, the, um, the Puppet OpenStack Cloud Puppet module, which is uh, the high level module that you may want to use to deploy OpenStack. And uh, the two other repositories are related to the configuration management. So you can go ahead and test by yourself. We have also a documentation. 
and uh, you can report us any feedback is welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> if you have any question or feedback, mm. yep. Do we have a micro? Uh, do you have a micro for the questions? Yes, we have. Thanks. No, no, you can go. You can slow pass, I think. Why? So why, uh, why Ansible when you already have Puppet? So um, Ansible is doing the orchestration. Like uh, it's a set of tasks that we want to orchestrate uh, without Puppet. Puppet is here to manage the configuration and the service, uh, the service stop or start uh, management. So if you want to start a compute node, Puppet will manage the, the, the Nova configuration and the Neutron extra, but Ansible will only be here to, up, to manage um, the upgrade process. Like, I want to stop this service, and then I want to upgrade the node, and I want to start the service again. But if I want to upgrade the configuration, it's done by Puppet. Mm. So yep. we, we choose uh, the Ansible because for now, in Puppet, you have some orchestration, but it's not exactly what we wanted to do, so we just uh, found out that Ansible was exactly what we needed. Usually, Puppet is more for orchestration on a local system, and Ansible is, is better to use, uh, to do orchestration on a set of systems, like a rolling upgrade, this system first, this one after, etc. Okay. That's, that's the reason. Thank you. Uh, Puppet comes with M Collective. So d did you look into it? Uh, I mean, M Collective is part of the, uh, it comes with Puppet, uh, and it's an uh, orchestrator. So why, why you choose uh, Ansible and not M Collective for, for the? So the question is, why using Ansible? And not M Collective. Not M Collective? Yeah. yeah. Because M Collective is more to do a, a distributed, uh, uh, task, in fact, doing the same task on uh, all the nodes, and it's not an orchestrator. We don't do uh, one task, then one uh, uh, wait for the task to be finished, and then do the others. That's not uh, how uh, M Collective is designed, in fact. It's more uh, distributed uh, run, in fact. So that's why we, we use uh, Ansible instead of M Collective. Yeah, basically, with M Collective, you can simulate the We, same we can, can build on top of M Collective, I agree yeah. with you, but for Ansible, it's native, it's uh, already designed. Okay, thank you. Well, yes, this, this guy. Sorry, can I ask a question quickly? Yeah. Um, why are you using eDeploy rather than tools like uh, Razor or um, Ironic to uh, get your images across? Uh, I, I saw a slide from you how you had the workflow, yes. what eDeploy does. I, I think there are existing tools for that. I'm just wondering why you chose to implement your own. There are existing, yes, Razor is the closest uh, tool to, to eDeploy. The, the, um, the thing that we designed uh, first was for the upgrades, to be able to do upgrades, and that was not available in the other tools right now. So the idea was to, we, we designed first the upgrade, and then we said, oh, it's nice, uh, we could use the same thing to do the uh, deployments, and then that's why we built uh, eDeploy, and we, st we st stick with it, because that's the same tools to do the same, uh, all the different steps, in fact. Uh, what about RAID and BIOS? Yeah, these guys are oh, waiting guy. for, oh, yeah, <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> um, what modules are you guys actually using to uh, manage the underlying databases like MongoDB and, uh, and I guess what MySQL clustering are you using? Can you just repeat the... It's oh, very, sorry. Very um, thanks. <laughs> thanks. What modules are you using to manage the underlying databases like MongoDB and MySQL and what clustering are you using for so MySQL? We are using Galera with uh, MariaDB packages. And for MongoDB, we use uh, packages in uh, Realm. So. But as far as Puppet modules for Galera mm. management? Yeah. 
We, we are, uh, Puppet which, modules is... Uh, wh which one? Oh, which Pup one? Mm. The Puppet Labs module. Oh, okay, I guess uh, when I looked at it, they didn't have okay. that at the time. Thank you. I'm just curious what you guys do for RAID and BIOS uh, when you have bare metal uh, RAID and BIOS configuration. Is it assumed that that's all set to go? Yes, during the hardware detection, in fact, we read all the BIOS information. In fact, a lot of uh, uh, stuff coming from the hardware. BIOS version, uh, even the, uh, the RAM settings, everything is uh, gathered and, and we can detect uh, misconfiguration or if it's not uh, homogeneous we can uh, st during the hardware validation we can uh, decide to stop in fact can you can you also do things like jbot or raid 10 make those decisions and and do that automated as yes well? we're doing the configuration the scripts in fact are just python scripts and we can do whatever we want in fact uh, managing the raid do, doing jbot or whatever we need to do so how do you deal with Hello? Yeah. Uh, so how, how do you deal with the BIOS? I mean, th you run the same hardware everywhere or what? So Can you speak closer? So if, if it's Dell versus HP, something else, how do you deal with, um, with BIOS management? How do you update BIOS? How do you make sure yeah. the settings yes, are correct? We, we don't manage BIOS upgrades. That's uh, something we need to work on. Right now, we rely on the uh, um, tools that are given by the hardware manufacturer to but we have some tools to validate that everything is at the same level, but we don't manage the BIOS itself. Actually, it's possible if, you, if the API of the vendor yeah, yes, provides you. For HP, we use the API of uh, HP servers, so if, if HP provides this API to upgrade the BIOS, it's doable, because it's only Python scripts you need to deploy to configure the hardware. Question. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you.